Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. On the 14th of January, 2023, a grisly new video was released online depicting the murder of an unknown man in Brazil. The video harkened back to the old age of online gore, back in the days of Ogrish, Liveleak, and Best Gore. The murder bears similarities to the infamous Three Guys One Hammer video, which of course was carried out by the Dnepropetrovsk maniacs, two Ukrainian serial killers who murdered 21 people between the 25th of June 2007 and the 16th of July 2007. In relation to backstory, very little is known about the savage murder though it did take place in Brazil, in the city of Goiania, in the state of Goias. No names have been released in relation to the victim or the perpetrator, neither is it known how the video surfaced online. An unnamed 23-year-old man was arrested mere hours after the murder, so it is possible that the killer himself uploaded the footage online, though some speculate that the video may have been leaked by police. According to reports, the murder occurred after an argument between the two men. It's also said that the two men were neighbours and spent the previous night drinking. In regards to the perpetrator, it is alleged that he has a long criminal history, with many serious crimes on his record, including attempted murder and drug trafficking. It is thought that he was part of a local gang or a large-scale criminal organisation. Neighbours reported the incident to police after hearing a struggle and loud bangs from the opposite apartment. Goyas is a state that has been plagued by violent crime in recent years, largely fueled by the drug trade. Predominantly, the area is controlled by two large criminal organisations, Commando Vermelo, known as the Red Command in English, and Primero Commando de Capital, or the First Command of the Capital in English. Both gangs are known for their sheer brutality and ruthlessness, although these gangs do not hit for headlines like cartels in Mexico do. But make no mistake, they are no less brutal. In fact, the situation in Brazil is actually worse when it comes to violent crime, corruption and murder rates. Both gangs primarily rely on drug trafficking to make their income, though they also deal drugs at a local level, as well as running other criminal rackets such as prostitution, murder for hire, and extortion. Both criminal factions have similar origin stories. Much like many other criminal factions in Brazil, they initially started in prisons. The Red Command, originally known as Falange Vermela, was formed in 1979 as an alliance between ordinary convicts and leftist militants who were incarcerated together during the military dictatorship of 1964 to 1985 at the Candido Mendes prison in Rio de Janeiro. In the early 1980s, the group changed its name to Commando Vermelo and abandoned its far-left political ideology. Since then, the group has grown to become one of Brazil's largest and most powerful criminal groups. As for Primero Commando de Capital, they were initially formed on the 31st of August 1993 at the Tubate prison in Sao Paulo by eight prisoners. The group initially got together during a prison football game, and they decided to name their team the Capital Command, a name which would stick, as the game was followed by the brutal killing and decapitation of both a deputy prison director and a prisoner with special privileges, 
with the head of the latter being put on a stake for all to see. The gang was also formed with a clear agenda, aiming to fight the oppression inside the Sao Paulo penitentiary system. Initially, both the Red Command and the First Commands of the Capital were allies, and would work together for several years, both in various prisons across Brazil, as well as on the streets. Following the alliance with Commando Vermelo, the First Command of the Capital adopted Vermelo's far-left beliefs, and began advocating for revolution and the destruction of Brazil's capitalist system. Since the 12th of May 2006, there has been 299 attacks against public establishments such as police stations, courtrooms, transport hubs, etc., which were all allegedly organised by the First Command. According to Brazilian government reports, the First Command is the largest Brazilian criminal organisation with almost 20,000 members, 6,000 of whom are in prison, though Commando Vermelo have been gaining more influence in recent years. The alliance between the gangs would not last, however, and in recent years, the two factions have engaged in many bloody turf wars, which has left countless dead. Much like drug cartels in Mexico, the gangs will very frequently turn to social media in order to recruit new members, particularly young impressionable teenagers who are destitute and poverty-stricken. They also very frequently publish gruesome execution videos, many of which I have covered on this channel. Although Mexican cartels have the reputation of uploading the most gruesome content online, it may be argued that more of this despicable content actually comes from Brazil, especially in recent years. The brutality of both organisations crossed over and hit mainstream media in early January of 2018, following a brutal prison riot at the Colonia Agro-Industrial Semi-Open Prison in Goya State, in which nine prisoners were brutally murdered. It was also reported that around 100 prisoners also escaped, many of which have still not been captured. It said that at least two of those killed were decapitated, and others had severe signs of torture. The bodies were burned by the inmates, and there were even claims of cannibalism. The violence began when prisoners linked to the Sao Paulo gang, First Capital Command, broke into a wing controlled by their rivals, the Red Command, one of Rio de Janeiro's most powerful and feared mafias. Ultimately, the incident was one of many when it comes to the battles between the two criminal organisations. As the weeks pass, the war still rages on, and shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. In relation to the video, it is possible that the killer may have belonged to one of the aforementioned gangs, and that potentially, the murder was more than just a drunken squabble that turned violent. Potentially, we will have new information in the coming weeks and months, Though, more than likely, this case will be buried among the thousands of other murders in Brazil. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual video? The video itself is a short one, at 1 minute and 12 seconds long. The setting is that of what looks to be a residential bathroom or kitchen, with a white tiled floor. Where have we seen that before? The video is shot in a POV type of style, with the killer standing over the victim. The victim is laid on his back on the tiled floor, with a pool of blood under his head, and with further blood splatters all throughout the room, including the walls. There are also bags, rubbish, and clothes surrounding the victim. As you play the video, 
you see the full extent of the victim's injuries. He is still alive, though he appears to be drifting in and out of consciousness. His head is bloodied and swollen from the blunt force trauma. His jaw looks to be completely shattered, and his eyes have swollen shut. His face is completely disfigured by the beating. At the start of the video, you see the killer carrying a hammer, POV style, as he mocks his victim. He makes what I can only describe as a high-pitched screech, almost as if he's trying to mimic a baby's cry or even a wild animal. He sounds pure psychotic. The victim then responds with a deep but brief groan. Following this, the killer strikes the victim in the face around the jaw area with the hammer to shut him up. The hammer striking his face creates a wet, bassy thudding sound. He then talks to his victim in a condescending but soft tone, once again mocking him. You then hear the poor victim make a snoring type of noise. Think of somebody snoring and gurgling at the same time. This is exactly what it sounds like. The killer then strikes him in the jaw once again to shut him up. The killer then hits him again and then resumes talking to him. He does this a couple of times, dragging out the victim's suffering. At the end of the video, the killer goes full psycho and strikes the victim in the face repeatedly with the hammer. As he does this, he makes what I can only describe as a high-pitched squealing laugh, almost like a witch. After several hard strikes, he gets closer to the victim and zooms onto his face, giving an even clearer view of his injuries. Again, the victim's face is unrecognisable due to the swelling and blood caused by the hammer blows. At the end of the video, he once again talks to the victim in a soft tone, almost the way you would talk to a young child. This is where the video ends. According to reports, the victim died due to the repeated blows to the head. It is said that the killer, off camera to make sure that his victim was dead, stabbed him with a long skewer. The video is new. As of when recording, it is only eight days old, so information surrounding it has been hard to obtain. Regardless, the video is extremely graphic, and the few noises that the victim makes are reminiscent of Free Guys One Hammer. The groaning and gurgling turned my stomach. Though, even more disturbing is the frantic and psychotic behaviour of the killer. This one isn't for the faint of heart. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it if you can enjoy this sort of content. If any of you guys have any topic ideas, as always, feel free to get in touch either on Twitter, the link will be in the pinned comment, alternatively, you can email me. I've also put a link to my Twitch in the pinned comment, if you could check that out, it would be much appreciated. But anyway, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.